doing this thing as a team of five people, but we want it to be a thing that um, instructors and it's their students can come in and uh, improve upon over time. So I don't know what the question is that goes after that, but how do you do it? <laughs> well, like, no, like, like, if I know what's what the mean, platform? Because, like, how does yeah, it work? so a platform like Pressbooks. Um, you're you're creating something that's student facing, but then for the next user that wants to make a derivative version or like a next edition or whatever, they have to like go in and download something else that they can edit and then put something else up that's separate. It's like they're branching. Yeah. But you're saying you want the thing itself to be editable very easily. So I think you I know I think you need to look at WikiBooks. Are you doing another thing to think about? Is it text heavy or is it graphics? Heavy? We're wanting so it's it's going to be um, a textbook for developmental reading and writing students at okay. Clackamas Community College. Yeah. So um, it will be. I mean, obviously there will be text, but um, we want it to be really multimodal. So we want there to be video and podcasts and things like that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but we also we just want it to be everything yeah. to all people. Um, we also want it to be printable, but yeah. Yeah, print is really important. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. struggling with that too yeah. because I want to put in all the things. Yeah, I want all the but things. But I also yes. want them to be able to buy a yeah. hard copy mm -hmm. thing at the bookstore because some of them really want that. And Not most of them, but yeah. a few of them want to have a thing to hold. Right. Well, and you can't print a video. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. That's so much harder. Like, there's yeah. a whole piece of our content that's just going to be excluded from the print version. You know. So it's interesting. What? How do people deal with that problem? Place video here. <laughs> right? Imagine that people are doing this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you could think of it along the lines of an alt text for an mm -hmm. image. Mm -hmm. So you might want to include the video transcript there or a description of what the video is doing. Oh, or you yeah. might want to have a flag in the text that says, go to this link and watch this video right now. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But yeah, I've been... Um, learning a lot from Kayla Parks at PCC. She's their accessibility services mm -hmm. coordinator and is really a great thinker about um, accessibility for OER and how you want to you know, make things accessible for diverse learners. So do YouTube videos automatically have transcripts? No, but um, if, you, if you have a script that you're reading from, <clears throat> you can upload that, like the YouTube feature that'll like caption for you is pretty bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you can easily upload a script and it'll match the text to the time for oh, you. Okay. So that's what I use because I don't mind reading for a script when I make a learning object. Mm -hmm. um, each community college also has a certain number of hours of captioning that's paid for. Mm -hmm. So if you create a video, you can send it out to get captioned. I only know how that works at WinBet because that's where I report. It takes mm -hmm two plus weeks to get it done, so you need some lead time. That's the lead time that they need it to not put as well that they put out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Assuming that it's not complicated. So the thing is on course. YouTube, oh. would that, would a transcript of that be something that you could put in as open source? Depends if the video was given a Creative Commons license. And there's a place on YouTube to give a Creative Commons license. Okay. Yeah, if you put content up on YouTube, you can give it a Creative Commons license. And that is that is not the standard YouTube license. You know how a lot of them just say standard YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you got to look for that. <clears throat> and you can also search for Creative Commons licensed videos. Oh, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I found when I was making my things is mine are totally graphics heavy. And the sort of HTML5 e-reader format does not deal with graphics. Mm. So if you've got if you've got a lot of words, then an e-reader type format is great. But if you have a lot of pictures, um, the e-reader e doesn't handle pictures very yeah. well. And so a PDF handles pictures a lot better. Right. Okay. And then you've got to make sure that the PDF is accessible to a screen reader. Yes. Yeah. Which is really important. And uh, Lisa, I just want to remind myself. Are you adopting the OpenStax? Uh, 
I have adopting parts of the OpenStack, so but I actually downloaded language. the whole thing mm -hmm. and converted it into a Word document. Mm -hmm. Although Microsoft or Max will not do that. Yeah. So I had to come to school, do it on a PC, put it on a flash drive, and then take it home to my laptop. Did you do was it dot D O C X? On the Mac? Macs will not do it. The, like, yeah. I looked it up, and you have to get their yeah, apps okay. that will do it for you, but Macs are like, no, this okay. is not a thing that we're okay with. Okay. Um, but you, it was really easy on the PC. Well, good you. <laughs> because CNX was such a pain. Like, it was so slow. Uh, yeah. It was like, I thought I was going to die every time I wanted to get it to do anything because there was like 20 seconds after any click. So, yes, I was going to do that. No, I'm not going to. So and um, so it sounds like now you're working in Microsoft Word, um, and are you thinking along the lines of Jamie that this is going to be like a living document, or are you kind of making something that's like here's your textbook, like you're ready to give students the version of record of the thing? I think that my plan is to start with that uh -huh. because I don't have a platform to do all the things, yeah. right? And I think that um, MHCC needs to come to some sort of consensus about how we're going to put all this stuff out there. Mm -hmm. um, and if they're OK with me just having it in a, in a place, then I can find a place to put it. Well, so my and I don't know if they want something specific. Well, my suggestion would be to use the Open Oregon Pressbooks instance. Um, and if you give me a Microsoft Word document, I can import it into Pressbooks. As long as your chapter titles are marked up as H1. And I'll, I'll tell you before you give me your file, but then it just imports really nicely as chapters. Um, and I can show you what a Pressbook looks like. I can show you what an open Oregon Pressbook looks like. Okay, I've looked at the Pressbooks yeah. website because I my my original thought on this went from CMX, CNX to anything other than CNX. <laughs> yeah. And Pressbooks was one of those things. Yep. And, and yeah. so I've, I've played around with Pressbooks a little bit, yeah. but I would like it to not... I, I Putting it into Pressbooks I think would be great to print it, but I also want to eventually be able to put it into a place where I can put in videos and I can put in all the other stuff that I want. So I need to be able to get it back out of Pressbooks. So I'm pretty sure that you can embed a video in this. It runs on WordPress software, so it should be friendly. I, someone else has that question and I need to remind myself to look at that. Um, But so this is my guinea pig press book, and I'm also working with a um, book designer um, to do like a series cover design, so it won't just look like that. <laughs> and she's gonna make covers, like it sh it'll, it'll output with the nice cover in HTML, PDF, Kindle, Mobi, EPUB, whatever, you know, and print. So that'll be taken care of, which I'm excited about. Um, and then, you can see there's a table of contents down here, <clears throat> and you can also okay. read the book. Um, you can turn the pages. So when you, so read the book is the option that makes it feel most like turning the page. Yeah, and, and okay. here's the table of contents again. Oh, so okay. on every page, you can easily jump through. Okay. Yeah. Is there a, a print option in that setting or in that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. This is the thing about Pressbooks is that it outputs in all these formats. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, that's a really that's strong nice. selling point. And also just the fact that um, you don't have to actually do any formatting. Like the interior of the book is formatted for you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's really nice. OK, so. But you could start that in Word. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. you could start, in fact, this was um, a Word document. Yeah. Um, so basically, what happened was that Robin mm -hmm. Jeffrey is a librarian at Klamath Community College, and she wrote this writing handbook. Um, they adopted it in all their writing classes and um, put it out as a PDF. And I said, hey, will you give me the Word doc? I need a guinea pig to start learning about press books. So that's how this book came to be. OK. Yeah. OK, so I'll just keep going in Word mm -hmm. with the idea that eventually it will make it possibly into press books. Because honestly, I would rather be able to edit it on my computer mm -hmm. 
because the internets are often slow, and that makes it a lot more of a pain. Yeah, you should work in the way that you're comfortable. And I can get it into Pressbooks for you. I mean, to me, like all of your time is more valuable spent on content, mm -hmm. right? Like I don't need you to spend time learning this platform. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. I don't know if I can do that level of support with cookie books. <laughs> I can learn with you. <laughs> Have you had other people use cookie books? No, although I was talking with Dave Mount about it because he wanted to make like a DIY like open something that would do the function of the Norton. Um, oh, and a lit, a lit. Yeah, like an anthology, and he felt like what would be missing if he left the Norton behind was all the annotations and mm -hmm. the notes and stuff, and then he realized, well, what if the students had to add that content and so annotate so themselves? I know, he's so smart. Um, and so we were talking about Wikibooks as a possible solution, but I don't know if he's adopted it or not. So yeah, all the platforms have their own special pros and cons. They all have their own limitations. So a very great specific mm -hmm. question. I said that we were going to be piloting our stuff summer term. If it's in individual Word documents and the students are accessing those by downloading them off of our uh, website, does that count as a pilot? Like, <laughs> I don't. Realistically, <laughs> I don't think that it's going to be in its sort of finalized pretty form. Pretty form. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about that. Like, is that really is that really user friendly for your students? Like, no. Do you want to just give me the stuff but, and pop it into Pressbooks for you before summer term, and then we can revise and edit? I mean, like, once it's in Pressbooks, that doesn't mean it's final. We still have editing access. You know, I don't want your students to have a bad experience. Because I could affect the whole pilot process. Yeah, the, the thing about the summer term is that there will only be about 12 of them probably. So like, if it takes some extra one-on-one -on -one coaching to get them to use it, mm -hmm. I can totally do that over the summer. Like, I would rather have the flexibility to edit it on the fly mm -hmm. as we're going through and I'm like, if I forgot the section on whatever, uh -huh. rather than having it in a finalized, yeah. pretty version. Yeah. I'd this rather is, be able to get yeah. their feedback. This is so editable, though. Oh, actually, you know what? This is one of those sites where I can't remember my password. <laughs> but, you know, to show you the back end, it looks just like a WordPress site. Like, you can easily go in there or ask me to go in there or whatever, but you can. So, it, it's just like okay. editing a blog post. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I would say don't be. It might actually make your life things. easier yeah. if it was like that. I mean, because it gives them all the flexibility of, um, yeah, being able to print it or not in different formats and it being, um, what's it called, responsive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. different size screens. Um, yeah, those are valid points. Yeah, I mean, so let let's talk. But I would say like. I guess like, or, or if you really feel like, no, I just want to leave it in Word for right now, like, you know, save it as a PDF and send it to the bookstore to make a nice packet or something, like give, give them something that feels consistent and authoritative and, you know, <laughs> let them, <laughs> you know, you don't want your class to be hard for the wrong reasons. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's my advice. It's your class though. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I'm also happy to talk more about it. Um, do you have any advice around, um, we haven't decided or not whether we're doing this or how we're doing this, uh, content that's more instructor facing versus student facing and how to organize that. Like let's, maybe we shouldn't talk about Wikibooks because maybe that's too different. But yeah, I don't know, have people done that where they're sort of like the instructor yeah, and we were talking about that on Friday at the Oregon Rights Conference. So it was like a conference about open resources for Writing 121. Um, and the group felt really strongly that 
having something that's an instructor guide is really useful, especially if it's being handed to an adjunct instructor who might have like a day to prep their course. They really appreciate having that. Um, I don't think we really reached a solution. Like Jen Kepka set up an Oregon Rights website and we were thinking, okay, maybe the student facing thing has a preface that refers out to the website where the instructor guide is available. Like you, oh, I see. the one thing you don't want is for the instructor guide to be something that a printer would interpret as something that they should print and bind with the book. Because you don't want students to have to buy that and right. carry it around, right? right. Yeah. Um, so keeping it separate in some way. Yeah. Yeah, that seems easy enough. Yeah. Just to link it in a different way. Yeah, That's link out to a published Google Doc or mm -hmm. yeah. OpenStats has a instructor guides, but you have to register with them and prove that you're an instructor first oh, before right. you can get them. Yeah. So that That's might be something yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. Which I'm hoping that we're not going to create quiz questions. That's, <laughs> that would be That's my goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, so writing in writing class, hopefully we can. <laughs> One thing about this book is that I realize it's been a very long time since I've done biology. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh God, it's, it's like starting over. I mean, not completely, but just terms that I wouldn't be able to, I'd need to study quite a bit. Yeah. That book goes into a lot of detail. Yeah. This is really awesome though because biology books are so expensive. What are the costs like for what you guys? I, you, again, you may have already talked about what your no, 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 are. No, no, no. Okay, you were really just, like two minutes late. Yeah, you were really late. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. I was, I was just like, boy, you guys like went right through. You already know all the. I've just been letting you feel guilty this whole time. Okay, <laughs> all right. But I know that you teach biology, and are you also in the sciences here? Yeah. Anatomy here at Mount Hood. Yep. And then you're over at Clackamas? Well, I was, uh, and I was in English, um, mm -hmm. but now I'm at PSU. But oh. I'm still part of the grant project at Clackamas. Oh, yeah. so, cool. Yeah. Are you part-time over there? Or? <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm actually in the Office of Academic Innovation, so I'm, I'm a full-time staff, not uh, faculty anymore. Okay. Office of Academic Innovation. So are you, are you, you know, it sounds like super fancy. So cool. I was there when they named it. Well, <laughs> most was like, you just have to have innovation in the name. So <laughs> is that the OEI? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's so you guys are in Smith Center on that second mezzanine. Yeah, that weird mezzanine that like it's like you, the, they have a hard time finding it. The Escher painting. Yes, the, it is. Yeah. It's yeah. That. yeah. Okay. It used to be the library's Texan. That's so. what I yeah. heard. Yeah. But yeah, so now I'm doing like faculty development and cool. Hopefully a lot of OER work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I get to shape whatever. Nice. Anyway. Yeah. I actually I work over there as well. I teach German here oh, cool. and there. Awesome. And um, I am an adjunct, so I am the one who does often get. Yeah, you know things, and so we actually when we did our adjunct orientation this fall, I don't know if you were already at PSU, but we did have uh, one of a well, workshop that people could you know decide to go to this, this, or the other yes. about the, the focus on faculty it, workshop. Yes, exactly, which was great because a lot of adjuncts <laughs> have no idea yeah. um, what they have, what resources <laughs> they have, and you know whether it be through your office or through the library and. Mm -hmm. They're all just like, yeah, we'd love to hear more from adjuncts since they make up more than half of our yeah. staff, and they don't know, they have you know, resources. and so right. Well, and the thing is that they, they do have resources, yeah. but yeah. PSU <laughs> has historically been very bad at reaching out to their adjuncts, which is why I am a huge yeah. union activist there, and also here, of course. But also, I mean, for full time faculty too. But historically, adjuncts have had a very hard time being connected to not only their resources or OER or things like this. But just feeling connected. So yeah. anyway, this is really this is really exciting, and we actually have an OER textbook. So I'm just adopting something that's okay. already really multi. Well, you're also um, our only um, foreign language grantee right now. Very yeah. Cool. yeah. So um, what's really neat about PSU is that for a very long time we had an OER before that was even a thing, and before things really became exorbitant. 
our one of our now retired faculty created his own book that was open resource like in awesome. 1990. Awesome. Um, but he retired and then in its place we ended up seeking out one that's actually, these are by Rice University and then it's a UT Austin actually. So another Texas, they're huge in linguistics and language and they came out with the, o, the OER for, um, for German called Deutsch in Blick. And uh, we've been using that now, this is the second year at PSU, so I'm really familiar. Cool. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this would be amazing when I saw these grants here. Yeah. So we're gonna implement that well, here. I should get your information because um, I'm gonna be doing a focus on faculty workshop of, on OER, so. Yes. We should, yeah, and they don't, they don't print uh, business cards for adjuncts, so if you have one, cards. then um, I'll take that and get in contact. Sounds good. But that's something we're actually working on in our contract, is that they actually give us business cards. Yeah, dude, you at least get a business card. I know. So, <laughs> awesome. Cool. Right. So is there going to be something like this, like an OER sort of day, or? Um, right now it's just like one workshop, because I'm, I'm getting to kind of shape all that stuff, uh -huh. so I'm figuring it out as I go. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, it'd be fun to sit down and like go through yeah. what the online textbook looks like. And um, and they do, because you can buy a copy, so as far as like getting it into the bookstore here, it's only about $40 if you want it. I mean, you can print it on your own, but if you want it already bound, it's yeah. just the cost of printing. So it's yeah. that same kind of non-commercial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how much, um, when somebody uh, buys this, how much does this the biology It varies. These for? open stacks books, mm -hmm. um, like a really thick one like that, might be like 40 or $50 mm -hmm. um, because it's in full color, hardcover, et cetera. Like you can get them printed more cheaply if mm -hmm. you want. The other thing is that, um, you know, if you're doing OER for your course, mm -hmm. you might choose just the material that supports your learning objectives and have a very slim book and then of course the cost of printing goes way down mm -hmm. because you're not making people buy all that content that they're not using yeah yeah so the interesting about those is you can get them from amazon yeah for the 40, text. yeah for 40 bucks and if you've got a you know an amazon account it's two days free shipping for right anything. and OpenStax actually just has a new platform out that's not cmx um in in collaboration with the Bookstore Association, and this platform is designed to let you just pick chapters of open content, and it shows you as you go, it's got like a thing that's ringing up the print cost. Oh, oh what, where's that feature? Super cool. It's in this new OpenStax platform. Okay. Would one go to OpenStax.org? So this was in the OpenStax training, so mm -hmm. I can resend the training information okay. and it'll have a link to that thing. Um, so I don't know if your book is available through that particular platform. Yeah. Um, but we can also, since your book is uh, Creative Commons license, if you wanted to make a slimmer version, <coughs> you have permission to do that. You can download it, just select whichever chapters and just have that smaller packet if you want to go that route. Okay. Yeah. So has, what would the feature reel has like printing cost added addition? Printing cost calculator feature. Yeah. I would love it to be free. Oh my goodness, this is almost three. Okay. And I guess people are coming in here. Wait, wait. I think this is the end take of the- Take some swag. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely take some. Yeah. yeah. I've already taken my swag. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. Well, it was nice to meet you all in person. Yes. Yes. Let me know what you decide to do for your summer class. Hmm? Yeah, well, let me know if you have more questions. I'm sure. Yeah, I will. I'm happy to answer. This is my job, so it's not bugging me. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too.